Ted fire in Siskiyou County is rapidly spreading. Now a thousand acres, possibly more. Evacuation orders are in place. We have everything you need to know. A Sacramento man charged with vehicular manslaughter after a deadly double collision on Highway 99. Authorities still trying to identify two people who died in the crash. A major drug bust, 47,000 marijuana plants and more seized. Details of the four-day operation. A mother grieving the loss of her daughter, her body found inside a duffel bag at Golden Gate Park. What we know next. Live, local, breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News at 11. We're following the head fire in Siskiyou County. This video was taken in Wairika just a few hours ago. The Klamath National Forest Service is reporting the fire is growing at a rapid rate. It's currently at 1,000 acres. According to the public safety app Watch Duty, it's mapping up to 3,000 acres. That's where we're starting our show tonight. The Siskiyou County Sheriff's Office just announced an upgrade to evacuation orders in parts of Siskiyou County. We're looking at the Genesis Project map found at the website you can see on your screen. There's orders south of Humburg, east of Horse Creek near Highway 96, and south of Forest Route 44. If you live in the area, authorities are asking you to evacuate right now. There's also warnings west of Klamath River, near Happy Camp, and east of Clear Creek. Everything in yellow is under an evacuation warning. Authorities are asking anyone in those areas to be prepared to evacuate if need be. If you need to evacuate, the Wellness Center in Wairika is open to those affected. According to the Siskiyou County Sheriff's Office, the address is 1403 Katrish Ram, Wairika 96097. If you have any questions, you can call the number on your screen. If you need to evacuate your animals, the Siskiyou County Office of Emergency Services shared the office head fire animal shelters. Rescue Ranch Wairika is the dog evacuation center. We have their contact information on the screen. The SNP of Siskiyou County is the center for cats. If you have any livestock, the Siskiyou Golden Fair is helping farm animals. This includes horses, pigs, sheep, and birds. We have their contact information on the screen as well. You can talk, contact any of these organizations with your questions. We have more details at krcrtv.com. We will continue to keep you updated on air and online with any changes. Cal Fire was also on the scene of the lightning fire. We're looking at footage shared by the Siskiyou unit. Officials reported this was in the Ponderosa area. It is now 78 acres, according to Cal Fire. Officials say no structures are being threatened and no injuries have been reported. We're headed to the Weather Center with First Alert Meteorologist Brian Schofield. Brian, with all of this, these fire conditions, is the weather playing a part in this? Oh yeah, and uh, hopefully it will tomorrow in the sense of a heavier rain in some of those areas. But truly, it's all about the lightning strikes and the strong wind coming out of these storms. It's really helping to keep these fires going. So we have a big batch of what looks like mostly showers going through Hat Creek right now. Bernie, you've been seeing that as well. Uh, in general, that uh, I've seen some lightning strikes in that batch, but it looks like things are kind of winding down as far as the thunderstorms are concerned. Yeah, you can see a few right there. Uh, closer in to uh, Siskiyou County, especially western ends, where we saw that big uh, complex of storms go through Happy Camp. You heard it. You saw it, and uh, remember, some of those back roads get flooded out easily by these heavy showers, so especially those low water crossings, easy to uh, get over there and uh, really cross over and not see the bottom of the roads, especially at night, makes it very difficult. You can see Hamburg South, uh, we're definitely talking about some showers that are finally winding down after getting some there. And Wairika, you had plenty of uh, thunderstorm activity through the area, and now things are winding down there as well. So I'm happy to say that. Uh, still have those showers running through uh, mostly Modoc and parts of Alturas there. And uh, th those are obviously areas where we've been talking throughout the day about a fire danger with red flag warnings there. Some showers continue across the area, but for the most part, this will be the last batch for the night with more on the way for tomorrow. Give you the timing of that and your first alert forecast coming right up. In Butte County, a man has been charged with vehicular manslaughter after a deadly double collision earlier this month. On August 6th, 25-year-old D'Angelo Charles was driving south on Highway 99 when he crossed lanes, hitting a Ford Ranger pickup. 
Officials say two people in the pickup died from the head-on crash. Charles was with his girlfriend and her three-year-old son. Both of them are still undergoing medical treatment for their injuries. He was extracted from the vehicle, which officials say caught fire while crews were helping those involved. The Butte County Sheriff's Office is still working to identify the two people who died at the scene. Charles is facing multiple charges, including child abuse and being a felon in possession of a gun. He's currently in the hospital for treatment. Authorities say he'll be arrested and booked into jail when he recovers. Charles is facing up to 29 years in state prison. Also in Butte County, a Chico man will likely face charges after getting arrested for illegal drug and firearm possession. Agents with the Butte Interagency Narcotics Task Force arrested 40-year-old William Larrabee Jr. Larrabee Jr. was involved in several vehicle pursuits, assault, and domestic violence incidents in the past. Law enforcement tells us they wanted to make sure he couldn't put anyone in harm's way. They made sure he didn't have access to a car before they approached him. Well, we knew these incidents were occurring. We knew that, or excuse me, they had occurred and that the likelihood if he was able to access the vehicle while we were you know, trying to serve our search warrant, likely we were going to have another pursuit, which we did not want. That's why we approached this a little bit differently, how we served that warrant um, and did so in a way that we knew he would not have access to a vehicle. Agents found a rifle, handgun, eight grams of meth and one gram of fentanyl in his possession. Turning to Trinity County, officials found almost 50,000 marijuana plants during a massive drug bust operation earlier this month. The Trinity County Sheriff's Office reports this operation happened over the course of four days. 35 warrants were served in the Trinity County area. Officials say the operation focused on private properties illegally growing marijuana without permission. In total, they seized more than 47,000 marijuana plants, more than 6,000 pounds of processed marijuana, 25 firearms, 10 pounds of banned material, and more than $200,000. New tonight, a person died after a structure fire in the Douglas City area. According to the Trinity County Sheriff's Office, officials responded to a structure fire last Thursday. The person was found inside the structure. Authorities are not releasing the name at this time. The cause is still under investigation. They say they don't suspect foul play. In the Bay Area, authorities in San Francisco continue to investigate after a woman's body was found inside a duffel bag at Golden Gate Park on Sunday. The victim has been identified as a homeless woman. Her mother says she suffered from mental illness and she feared for her daughter's safety. Reporter J.R. Stone spoke with the mother who tells us what we know so far. This is 37-year-old Kelly Koike, the woman found dead in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park on Sunday night. Her mother described the conversation she had Monday with the coroner. Yesterday, um, they find your daughter in duffel bag, uh, a dog walker find her. Roya Koike tells us her daughter was living on the streets of San Francisco. I'm Kelly, we're homeless. And suffered from a mental illness, saying she had a lifelong passion for makeup and design, even changing her eye color to all white at one point. I know deep, deep, deep down in her, without this part here, <laughs> she's like, good. Messed up, messed up here. But she got killed. Police will only say this is a suspicious death. Investigators worked late into the night Sunday at Golden Gate Park, but so far no arrests have been made. Very hard, very hard. Roya says she remembers the good times when they would go to Benihana as a family. She says Kelly, who you see here in pictures, graduated from culinary school and then worked as a concierge in San Francisco. But the mental challenges that started in her teens eventually overtook everything else. Roya says she feared for her daughter's safety in San Francisco, but was also fearful for her own safety when her daughter was home and not on her medication. Being homeless in the city, uh, I knew something bad would 
would happen. Royal wishes that Kelly would have been more open to receiving treatment that may have helped get her off the streets. Very sad. It's so sad. Beautiful. She, she was, I, I know I'm the mother, but I, I, I show you pictures. She was not that gorgeous. I mean, she was beautiful. Was, I can't believe it, it was. <sighs> She's still in a bit of shock over this and hopeful for answers on what happened in the park. J.R. Stone, ABC 7 News. After the break, a church in Lahaina survives the deadly flames. The unbelievable story next. First, here's a live look from our Hassel Roots Law Sky Cam. It is still hot outside, even at this time of night. More heat on the way tomorrow. Take a look at this satellite imagery from Lahaina. It shows a building that seems to be intact in patches of green grass. They are surrounded by devastated buildings and scorched earth. That building is the Maria Lahaina Catholic Church. A newspaper ran by the Diocese of Hawaii is reporting when the priest came to check on the church, it was fairly untouched. Almost all of Lahaina was burned by the wildfires. This just in, the death toll has now reached 106, according to the Associated Press. Military personnel with the U.S. Army Pacific are in Maui supporting FEMA's response to the island's wildfires. That's according to Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary. The National Fire Protection Association says the wildfires are the deadliest in the U.S. in more than 100 years. They say many active duty troops are involved in the response efforts there, including the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. These assignments include inter-island air and sea transportation for the movement of cargo, personnel, supplies, and equipment, setting up a defense coordinating element office, including liaison officers, use of Schofield barracks to support facilities for billeting, life support, and hygiene facilities for federal emergency responders, standby for aerial fire suppression, strategic transportation of personnel and or cargo, and setting up additional staging areas on Maui and Oahu. Over 100 people have been confirmed dead from the wildfires. Hawaii's governor says that number could double over the next 10 days. We're bringing you stories of people in the North State helping victims of the Maui wildfire. The North State's News Anwar Stetson spoke with a business owner on the ridge in Butte County who has a special connection to the island. Twenty-two. I had no plans. I was just excited to move there and, um, you know, just get to live that lifestyle and uh, get to live somewhere somewhere so wonderful was um, was the plan. <laughs> April Kelly is one of the few people that have had the luxury of living in paradise twice. The Paradise, California native has family that's lived on the ridge for generations. But two decades ago, on a whim, April packed her bags for a new paradise on the island of Maui. So uh, I actually lived in a small community called Kahana, which is a little bit north of Lahaina. I lived in that one square block for all 16 years. So what made you move back to here, guys? Love. <laughs> After 16 years on Maui, April reconnected with an old high school friend. They moved back to paradise together, and she had a son, Bennett. A year later, the campfire took almost everything. Gosh, I mean, just like everybody else, the campfire was um, devastating. April's family lost 16 properties in the fire, but Paradise rebuilt, and April helped open Nick's Wine Bar, which she now manages. The fires on Maui have now surpassed the campfire as the deadliest in recent U.S. history. The haunting images in Lahaina bring back painful memories. It's been really, really difficult. You know, it's um, of course bringing back all of those same feelings, um, but also just the sense of loss again for me. But April sprung into action. With her connections on the island, she helped bring money and donations to families that have lost everything. They're a community that um, is very strong and we can help them financially and help them to rebuild in the way that they need to rebuild. And I think it's very, very important that um, we let them tell us what they need. I'm Anwar Stetson for the North States News.
Let's go ahead now and take a look at all of the ways you can help victims of the wildfire disaster. You can donate to the Maui United Way, which says they'll provide immediate financial help to victims. There's also the Maui Strong Fund, which is a local Maui foundation that is working to shelter those who lost homes. You can also donate to the American Red Cross, which is working on immediate relief efforts in the region. There are also numerous GoFundMes that have been set up to help the victims. Links to all of these sites can be found on our website. Still got some storms for tomorrow. Actually, we're going to see them probably extend through the end of the week. But you know, we're going to really start to see things go up tomorrow, uh, along with hot afternoons naturally and still humid conditions all coming up in your first alert forecast. And that's just ahead. A backyard fire broke out in Redding, the cause of the fire after the break. We're looking at video shared with us by Jill Whitney. This was a backyard fire off of Trumpet Drive earlier today. According to the Reading Fire Department, this was a small vegetation fire. Crews contained the fire to two backyards. The cause was determined an accident, starting from a faulty pool pump. Thank you for sending that in. Now we're looking at a time lapse of the slide fire, which sparked in Willows earlier today. We're looking at the oven lid camera brought to us by PG&E. According to Forest Services, this is near Slides Ridge, about one and a half miles north of Mount Lynn. Crews are currently on the scene attempting to contain the flames. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. Now let's head over to the Weather Center with First Alert Meteorologist Brian Schofield. What can you tell us about the current conditions, Brian? I can tell you we've got more heat, humidity and thunderstorms on the way and uh, truly we're going to keep them in at least through the end of the week. Wait till you see what computer models are now showing us. Uh, either way, still very uh, warm outside. I mean, that air is still a little sticky out there too. 94 degrees in Reading. Just last hour we were practically still 100. You know overnight lows are going to be in those 70s overnight. Still seeing some 80s and I'm glad to see all tourists and Shingletown in the 70s right now. That's very pleasant. But topped off the day, a record setting day, not in Reading. The record stands at 116, 113. We're okay with that one. A 113 Red Bluff, the record 112 from 2021. So recent history record there. A 103 in Weaverville, 97 all tourists. See some big numbers there. When City of Mount Shasta is hitting low 100s, that's, that's big news. That's a big deal. A 108 in Oroville, the same in Chico. I guess we shouldn't sleep on that number right there. That's another big one right there for Corning, you folks there. Beautiful Corning. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're seeing those thunderstorms pop up after a kind of a calm morning. So it takes a little bit of daytime heating, but the ones we've had tonight are still lingering through the area. We still have a little batch that's left over before it's all said and done. We kind of knew that was going to happen. There's just enough moisture around to keep these things going. So and enough heating of the day and the night. But you can see uh, definitely been watching a uh, western Siskiyou. Now some other areas which are still keeping some of those showers in, but the ones that aren't in now it had some bigger thunderstorms in earlier. So that's something that we've been following very closely. Take a look. Lakehead, you had some showers this evening. Redding, it looks like some of that could be hitting the ground. A little uh, dollop in through the area there. Round Mountain as well in Bernie. And out to Shingletown the past uh, day, you've actually seen some showers and even some nearby thunderstorms. We've been watching them through Soham and really through uh, Mendocino, it looks like, through Covlo. And that was yesterday as well. So same areas and we'll see very similar conditions for tomorrow. Once again, once this moisture really gets locked into some of these mountains, it lifts cools, condenses, and then it gets really a, a, you know, widespread across the area. Uh, we had a tropical connection with this one. That's some of the moisture that you're seeing, believe it or not. So speaking of tropical, uh, you know, we've got a hurricane that will not make its way to us, but we've got some tropical moisture down to the south. I've been showing this off throughout the day because this little piece of energy in the long range forecast, and this is how advanced some of the forecast models are, can show it coming all the way up the coastline and making its way here not the hurricane or tropical storm itself, the moisture from it. So that's something we'll be watching for next week. We could do this all over again. You didn't want me to have to bring that information to you. I know that, right? Precision cast. I always bring bad news, it seems. <laughs> you got uh, definitely seeing uh, some showers pop up for tomorrow. Uh, along the coast, we're not so concerned about cloud cover, but any cloud cover you do get, most of it's going to come in from this way. So east to west flow right there. And then we get a little break overnight. Look over my shoulder, you see the, t the numbers again. Uh, by the afternoon hours, Thursday, and even into Friday, about the same time, we're going to be right back into it again. Hit or miss, Trinity County popping up, upper elevations through Siskiyou and out toward the east as well. Lake Tahoe has really been seeing plenty of thunderstorms there, but you know, they don't get our signal, so they're not watching us, but we're watching everywhere else. I'll tell you that uh, 70 for uh, the coast. We saw 70s 
all day, every day. We said we were doing, actually, we saw them today from Trinidad down to Eureka. Uh, 70s overnight for our overnight lows, 50s for the upper elevations. Afternoon highs, 108 Hayfork for tomorrow, 104 City of Mount Shasta, 99 Shingletown, and I might be being a little conservative on that number there, but 100 Bernie, oh yeah, you better believe that. And where are those triple digits? Where are the 110s? Right there. And I might be conservative on these a little bit. We'll, we'll be a, have a hot day, no doubt. We're forecasting 110 to end off the day with a, a lot of added humidity to make it feel a little stickier than usual. And there you go, got those 90s coming in with 60s. So we have some light at the end of the tunnel and it is sunshine. But in the meantime, the end of the week still brings in some thunderstorms. I suppose I could put some of those lightning strikes in there with the icons, but just suffice it to say we do cool things down. It won't be as sticky, but it still will be some, and we'll get some thunderstorms in before the heat of the weekend, and it's not that much heat. Back to you. Thank you, Brian. The, La the Lassen National Forest is proposing some fee changes to campsites and other recreation sites in the forest. They say right now more than 70% of the day use sites and overnight camping sites don't have fees. That could soon change. Some campgrounds will go from no fee to $10 to $12. Others that already have a fee could increase by $4 to $10. The proposal would also double the cost of cutting down a Christmas tree from $10 to $20. You can weigh in on these proposals before November 1st by sending your comments to 2550 Riverside Drive in Susanville or email them to mary.akley at usda.gov. After the break, the results are in and the red algae found on the North Coast is actually non-toxic. We have all the details next. Red algae was puzzling Humboldt's residents last week. Health officials have confirmed that orange algae bloom found at Salmon Beach is non-toxic. Here's some pictures sent to us on Chime In last week taken by Bruce Brown. Thank you, Bruce, for sending those in. Samples of the red substance were sent to the North Coast Regional Water Control Board's laboratory last week. The test came back non-toxic. However, officials are still recommending to avoid direct contact with the water because of potentially respiratory irritation or effects to the skin. Officials say the algae has disappeared now and the warning signs placed on the beach have been removed. A health specialist who works for Humboldt County Health and Human Services has some advice to stay safe near questionable water. Do not let pets or other animals drink, go into the water or go near the scum. Stay away from the scum and cloudy or discolored water. Do not eat fish or selfish from this water. Do not use this water for drinking or cooking. Boiling or filtering it will not make the water safe. We saw something similar in Butte County over the weekend. Butte Creek has taken an orange hue, and they, the blame, one group says, is on PG&E. These are pictures of the creek from Cal Trout. They're a nonprofit focused on maintaining healthy ecosystems for fish throughout California. The group says that a failed PG&E canal caused a high level of orange sediment to enter the creek. It is now posing a danger to native fish populations. Cal Trout says they are now working with multiple environmental groups as well as the local tribes to help restore the creek. We have reached out to PG&E for comment but have not yet heard back at this time. We'll be right back. Oh, there we go. So um, Bella, do you want some so more too? Good. Yeah. <laughs> It's time to chime in. Here's a cool video submitted by Pamela Johnson. She says another hot day and the equines get their own version of a water park. Thanks for sending this in to us. Make sure to send us everything on Chime In. Now, Brian, I think they're just horsing around because it's just so hot outside. <laughs> you know I'm not joining in on those puns. I know. <laughs> Very nice. All right, we got 70s to start off the morning. We've got 110s uh, to end off the day. Plan on it just being hot, even at the uh, 1 o'clock hour, we're already in the low 100. So plan on heat and plan on humidity. Thank you. Thank you for watching KRCR News Channel 7 at 11. Jimmy Kimmel is up next. Have a wonderful evening, North Coast.